không hiểu Trời ơi Welcome back Vietnamese language learners to lesson number 4 of this course where we break down the Vietnamese language into easily digestible parts to help you learn the lingo, understand the culture and make new friends. Bài học bon. And the main aim for this lesson is to be able to buy items from a convenience store. Something which you will invariably need to do in order to live and survive here in Vietnam. Before that, we will wrap up all the pronunciation stuff just because we're almost there anyway. So that will include knowing how to accurately pronounce all of the sounds in Vietnamese and knowing the Vietnamese names for the six tones. In order to be able to buy items, you will need to have an awareness of how to use noun classifiers and know how to count money up to a million. So let's get into it. In the first three lessons, we built up all the sounds and tones you needed in order to achieve the communicative goal of that lesson shown here highlighted in yellow. However, since we're not far off covering all the fundamentals of Vietnamese phonology, we're going to spend the first part of this lesson wrapping up all the pronunciation stuff so that we can finally put it to bed. Now, if you want to skip right to the core of this lesson, that is, identifying and buying things, then click on the timestamp below. I do recommend that you stick with this last pronunciation segment, however, as it will complete your understanding of undoubtedly the most challenging aspect of learning Vietnamese. With that said, let's start with a quick review of some of the new sounds from the last lesson as spoken by a native speaker. Try to repeat each word as accurately as you can. Ơ, cần, nhận, đờ, đâu, đến, bờ. Pizza, Pháp, Trờ, Trung, Trứng, Quờ, Quốc, Quên, Ngờ, Người, Mang, Không. Finishing off the rest of the consonant sounds at the top, we have Y, Y, meaning tone. And this represented by the D letter as the same as the GI digraph. Y or Z in the north. G, G, Gai. And this is slightly different from the English G in that the tongue is further back in the throat. It is more guttural sound. G, 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 Gao. And this is the same as the C letter. It's an unaspirated, unvoiced C sound. G. Now this Q letter, as in English, very seldom appears by itself. It's almost always with the U to make the gua sound. As in gua, ta, tit. And this is not a th as you would have it in English, but just a hard T sound. T, t. As a final sound, this ch is not pronounced as a j, as it is in the initial position, but as a final t or t sound after the i here. T, t. So you don't aspirate that final sound. You just put your tongue position in the place where you would make the sound and almost swallow it. T. Sac. Here is more of a final C sound, a G at the end, but again, you don't pronounce it. Sac. And here are all the vowel combinations which haven't been previously addressed. As in English, two vowel sounds together and you just say them in combination. A, U, O, DO, meaning pain. And I know this one very well because I was recently in a dentist and they were giving me a root canal with a faulty anesthetic, which did nothing to numb my pain. And as I was writhing in agony with tears streaming down my face, the dentist would keep replying, God, I'll come. God, I'll come. Do you have any pain? Yes, lots of it. Uh, e, I, day, day. Eh, uh, L, gel. 
é o eu, não? I a i a d a i e i e him a i i guy oi mui and we saw this triple vowel combination before now if we lose the e we have o moon moon oi doi Again, the same vowel combination, meaning age. And if we lose the u, oi, toi, the formal word for I, which is very seldom used unless in formal situations. Oi, as in moi, we saw before. Lose the u, and it's oi, 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 mai. Lose the e and it's u, u, moon, moon, u, mu, oi, goi, o, go. And here we have the final triple vowel sound u, a, u, o, ro, u, mu. Ui, tui. Now, although all these words are common and useful to know, I don't expect you to memorize them all, as this is not how this channel, and by extension, how language acquisition works. We first need to put these words into practice, and so the ones which are relevant to this lesson are now highlighted in yellow. Those being yo, guy, gal, tut, and moon. So now we've completed the whole Vietnamese alphabet. All the double vowel sound combinations at the bottom, alphabetically from A to U, as you will see in any Vietnamese English dictionary, together with the four triple vowel sound combinations on the right. But before we can close the book on this chapter completely, there is one other fundamental pronunciation feature we need to address, and that is glides. In English, we use the intrusive wa sound to glide between vowel sounds of adjacent words. You are Vietnamese. You are. You are. In single words, we just use the W letter as in twin. But the way we use the intrusive wa sound is similar how to it is used in Vietnamese. However, they use it just in single words. When a u letter is followed by any of the vowels a, e, or e, it changes to a wa glide. For example, tuan, tuan, week, hue, hue. This is the ancient capital of Vietnam in the central area. Huyen, huyen. This is the name of the falling tone, also a female name, and also an archaic word for deep. Nguyen. Nguyen. And you probably all recognize this name as it's the most common family name in Vietnam. And it comes down from the Nguyen dynasty and the Vietnamese people wanted to curry favor with them and adopted their surname as their own. The other situation where you'll find a glide is when an O letter is followed by any of the vowels a, a, or e, and it changes then to a w glide, as in nguai. And remember, ngui nung wai means foreigner. Luai, type or kind. Hua, flower. Hua, or kue, healthy or fine. So you might hear people say, an khoe kham, em khoe kham, are you okay, how are you? In previous videos, I ascribed an English emotional equivalent or memorable action to help your muscle memory get used to pronouncing the six tones. Those being ma, robotic, flat tone, ma, sad tone, ma, excited or exasperated tone, 
ma. Low constricted tone, ma. Questioning tone, ma. Hiccup tone, because you have that little glottal stop in between, like uh oh, ma. And remember, these two tones, ma and ma, are conflated in southern Vietnamese just to give you ma, the questioning tone. However, in northern Vietnamese, they are distinct. But I'd be remiss if I didn't conclude this with also going through the Vietnamese names for these tones, which in and of themselves give some extra useful vocabulary input. But this is also likely how a Vietnamese speaker will correct you when you butcher the tone of a particular word, which inevitably, like me, you will. And the first thing you will notice is that these tone names are somewhat onomatopoeic in that their tones and meanings both correspond to the tones which they describe. For way of example, yong ngang, ngang, meaning flat, and obviously it's in a flat tone. Yo huin, the word huin we saw a minute ago with the glide, and this means uh, deep, and obviously it's got a falling tone. Now, the actual word for deep uh, used today is so. Yo sắc, yo sắc. Sharp, again, these days you generally use ben to refer to something as sharp. Yo nang, nang, meaning heavy, heavy tone. This is a useful word to know. Yo hai. The asking tone makes perfect sense. Again, a good word to know. Yo ngã. Yo ngã. Ngã, meaning to fool. And that gives you the names of the six tones in Vietnamese. And again, yo hai and yo ngã are one and the same in southern Vietnamese, but distinct in northern Vietnamese. And just to finish up, we know that yo, the D, and the GI are pronounced as a Y in Southern Vietnamese. However, the D, the GI, and the R are all pronounced Z in Northern Vietnamese. Now, just before we get into the main body of the lesson, this has now concluded all the aspects of pronunciation you need to know in order to be able to speak Vietnamese clearly and intelligibly. And I can't impress on you how important it is to be able to do so. Because if you make a slip on a single sound or tone, it will often render whatever you wanted to say meaningless. And this is a big blow to anyone learning a language, and also the chief reason why foreigners give up on Vietnamese. But if you understand and are able to accurately produce all of the phonological features we've explored up until this point, you will be understood, and your motivation and ability to communicate will skyrocket as a result. I've seen several friends get past this huge pronunciation obstacle and become successful communicators in their language. And if you work at it, I'm sure you can do likewise. With that positive mindset going forward, let's get to the crux of this lesson. Now, the battle white, the articles and classifiers. And now, the just means article and loi means type, the meaning word, type of word. Like the is your classifier. Now, take a look at these four phrases. Which one or one stand out to you as being incorrect? It should be a bread. English uses the articles a and the or no article before every noun to help determine how said noun is perceived. For example, the definite article the before moon infers a collective knowledge that we are talking about a celestial body orbiting Earth, and therefore we know what the moon is referring to. Using the indefinite article a means that we are not referring to our moon per se, but rather some other moon, as in Saturn has X amount of moons, or Mars doesn't have a moon. In a sentence like, pass me the bread, the speaker and listener both know what the speaker is referring to, probably because there is only one of this item present. 
But if there are multiple of said items present, you can't say pass me a bread because bread is uncountable and therefore requires some kind of classification, i.e. a loaf, in order to be able to count it. A loaf of bread. In English, this only happens with uncountable nouns as in a blade of grass, a grain of sand, a drop of water. However, blade, grain and drop are all true nouns and not classifiers in the sense that they don't serve to categorize the noun which follows, but rather provide a further descriptive element. A loaf of bread, a slice of bread, a grain of sand, a mound of sand. In Vietnamese and many other Asian languages, for most non-abstract nouns, if you want to count or specify them in some way, you need to use the classifier which corresponds to their category or nature. Is it something round? Is it a fruit? Is it an animal? Can you hold it? Can you read it? Etc. Let's take a pizza. In Vietnamese, mot cái pizza. Cái being the default classifier, and as we know, classifiers are used to count or specify things. The pizza, we're still specifying, so we don't need mot, but we still need cái, cái pizza. This pizza, cái pizza này. Any adjectives or qualifications of the noun need to come after it in Vietnamese. So, cái pizza này, this pizza. Pizza in general, pizza, you don't need to have any classifier. Let's take a look at a few words here. Muốn, want, thật, like, đó, that. I want a pizza. What do you think the Vietnamese is for that? Em muốn một cái pizza. I want that pizza. Em muốn cái pizza đó. I want two pizzas. Chị muốn hai cái pizza. I like pizza. Chị thích pizza. Now here, you're talking about pizza in general. Therefore, no classifier is required. I want this pizza. And muốn cái pizza này. I want the pizza. And muốn cái pizza. And you probably won't ever say this last one because who knows what you're referring to in this situation. So using this principle of classifiers, how do we identify things? Cái này là gì? Cái này là gì? is probably the most useful question you need to know as a Vietnamese language learner, mainly because you can use it to build up your Vietnamese vocabulary by asking friends, colleagues, or just people you meet, like a shop assistant, while staying in the target language. First, we need a classifier, like cái, because we are specifying something, as opposed to talking about something in general. And since English doesn't use classifiers, if you wanted to accurately translate this word for word, you get this thing, which is categorized by the most common, often considered default classifier, is what? Obviously, this is a mouthful, so it's better just to think of it as, what is this? Or, what thing is this? So if you saw an animal and you didn't know the Vietnamese word for it, you would ask this question. Con này là gì? This thing, which is generally categorized by the classifier which typically refers to animals, is what? Or, what animal is this? Con này là gì? This animal thing is what? What animal is this? However, as with any language, there are exceptions. In this case, what classifiers can and can't refer to. Take this Vietnamese riddle. Con gì không phải là động vật. Now, word for word, it means what thing which uses the classifier for animals is not an animal. Obviously, you can't actually translate this to English because English doesn't use classifiers. Some answers you could give, however, which do not refer to animals include mot gan yao, a knife, mot gan dung, a road or a street, 
Mot gan sam. A river. Now let's look at some different questions and answers for identifying things. On the left we have go hai. Hai meaning to ask. Go meaning sentence. And you remember hai from yo hai, the questioning tone. Using the rules of compounding in Vietnamese, we have an ask sentence or a question. Go hai. On the right, same idea. Ja lời, the verb to answer. Go ja lời, the noun to answer. Cái này là gì? Cái đó là gì? Now, saying either of these questions will probably be considered quite rude as they would in English. How can we make them more polite? Well, first, a polite attention grabber, i.e. using the pronoun of the person you're addressing, typically an M J, and followed by I. And if you already live here in Vietnam, you probably are well aware of this structure. M I, an I, G I when you want to get someone's attention. And this essentially means excuse me, but the pronoun does refer to them as opposed to you. Now, after this, you should probably ask, Ja am hai, Ja an hai, Ja ji hai. Literally, word for word, give me ask, but meaning, can I ask? And here the pronoun is referring to you as opposed to them. So, put those together and am I? Ja an hai, cái này là gì? Is the polite way you would ask someone to identify something you didn't know. Some answers. Cái li, the glass. Một cái li, a glass. Nó là một cái li, it's a glass. Which is probably how we would answer it in English. Cái này là một cái li, this is a glass. Cái này là cái li. This is the glass. And this last one is probably the one you will hear, and it's more polite than just saying gai li. You're simply repeating the structure gai nai. And you don't necessarily need mot here because we know what glass you are referring to, the one here on the screen. Some other options would be gai nai gai la yi. What is this called? And if you wanted to emphasize the fact that you wanted to know the name of something in Vietnamese, you could say, Chom tiếng Việt, cái này gọi là gì? Chom, meaning in, tiếng Việt, Vietnamese. And if you just place ding in front of another word for the country, you will get the language of that country. Ding an, English. Chom tiếng an, cái này gọi là gì? Etc. Em ơi. Cho anh hỏi, cái này là gì? Cái này là bịch xà nách. Còn cái này thì sao? Cái này là bịch kẹo. Em ơi, cái đó là gì? Cái đó là cuốn sách. Còn cái đó thì sao? Cái đó là chai nước. Em ơi, cái này gọi là gì? Chọn tiếng Việt. Cái này gọi là điện thoại. Điện thoại. Okay, come on, Anne. Vietnamese currency is the Vietnamese dong, and the denominations of its notes are likely considerably larger than other currencies you might be used to. By way of example, one million dong is roughly equivalent to 33 pounds or 43 dollars. And so in order to be able to ask about price, we will need to be able to count into the millions. Starting at a thousand, this is mot ngan or mot ngin. Ngan is used in the south, ngin in the north. Mot ngan nam cham. Mot ngan nam cham. Cham being 100. Hai ngan. Nam ngan. Mui ngan. Mười lam ngàn Hai mươi Now at this point we're obviously not referring to 20 because 20 dong doesn't exist and you can't buy anything with it so from this point onwards the ngàn is generally left out for brevity 
although it's still optional. Một trăm, năm trăm, một triệu. This takes us up to a million, and there are a few exceptions that you need to note as well. Those being, hai mươi tư, hai mươi tư. And this is a variation on when we use four after denominations of ten. And you can still say hai mươi bốn, but hai mươi tư is also very common. When we get denominations of one to nine after a hundred or a thousand, then we need the le, which kind of means and in this uh, situation. So one hundred and one, một trăm lẻ một, một trăm rưỡi, một trăm rưỡi, rưỡi meaning half. So a hundred and a half, well, so one and a half hundreds, you could translate it as. Hai chuk, nam chuk. And this is a slightly less formal way of counting in tens. So you often hear this instead of hai mui, hai chuk, nam mui, nam chuk, nghe và viết. Now let's do some receptive practice. Here you will listen to Nghi say 10 different prices and you need to try and write them down as you hear them. So you will need a pen and a piece of paper. Just pause the video now so you can get those. After each question, there will be a pause of a few seconds to allow you to listen and write and then check your answers afterwards. You ready? Let's go. Bảy ngàn Mười hai ngàn Hai mươi lăm Bảy mươi bảy Một trăm lẻ tư Hai trăm năm mươi lăm Chín ngàn Chín mươi hai Sáu trăm bốn mươi bốn Sáu trăm bốn mươi tư Một triệu hai trăm năm chục Hãy loại cửa hàng điện lợi Loại meaning type Using the glide we saw earlier Cửa hàng is shop or store And điện lợi means convenient This is a scene you will see in almost any street or alley in Vietnam a local pulling up on a bike and asking for things at one of these roadside convenience stores, which are always run by a Vietnamese family, often with the sons or daughters providing a shop-to-bike service. You don't tend to walk into these places because everything they sell is generally visible from the outside, typically consisting of snacks, candy, maybe some fresh fruit, soft drinks, beer and cigarettes. Usually no one speaks English in these places, which is where your Vietnamese skills learnt in this lesson will come in handy. In contrast, Vin Mart, Family Mart, and a few other large chain stores are also ubiquitous nationwide. And these have checkouts like your average Western store. If in a city, usually the cashiers will have at least a basic command of English and will usually speak to you in it, even if you're trying to practice your Vietnamese. As such, we'll focus on the former, as this is traditionally how groceries were bought and sold. Những thợ bạn có thể mua ở cửa hàng tiện lợi. So, what can you buy in these roadside convenience stores? 
chai nuk sui. Chai here is the classifier, just referring to bottle nuk sui, spring water. Nuk is just water. Lan pia, lan beer. Lan meaning can, can of beer. Tiger being the most popular in Vietnam. Gai thuk la, gai thuk la. Gai meaning pack or box. Thuk is medicine, la is leaf. So literally a cigarette is a medicine leaf. Gai bật lửa. Gai bật lửa. Gai, the universal classifier we saw earlier. But snack, but quai dai jin. Now, quai dai jin literally means fried potato. Quai dai potato jin fried. And you'll see this in menus in restaurants very often, referring to French fries or chips. Here they're referring to crisps or in America, potato chips. However, most of the time Vietnamese will just loan the word snack from English. So, but snack, but meaning pack or bag, but gel, but gel, again meaning a bag or a pack of candy. Now the only word which we're using to specify here which is a true classifier is gai, as in the lighter, because all the others they are just referring to the container, which is how we would do it in English, a bottle of water, chai nuk sui, a can of beer, Motlan beer, etc. Hi veya. And you should remember from previous lessons that an bao nyu doi, meaning word for word, you how much age or how old are you? Bao nyu being the question word for how much or how many. And we will use this again to ask about price. Gai nai ya bao nyu. This thing, price, how much or how much is this? And ya is optional and so we can simplify this to cái này bao nhiêu and this is a very common phrase that you will use all the time mua những thứ ở cửa hàng tiện lợi cho a very common word in Vietnamese which you use all the time as a verb means give as a preposition means for or to chị ơi cho em một chai nước suối Chị ơi, cho em một chai nước suối. Excuse me, give me a bottle of spring water. Now, without the chị ơi or an ơi or em ơi part at the beginning, this would be pretty rude, as you can see in the one-to-one -one translation. With the polite address at the beginning, you could translate it as, can I have a bottle of water? They give you a bottle of water, Bao nhiêu chị? How much you? And by repeating the pronoun here at the end, again, it just makes it more polite. Bao nhiêu by itself is a bit abrupt. They tell you the price and you say, Cảm ơn chị. Cảm ơn chị. And we're using the rising tone, Yêu sắc for cảm here. You'll quite often see it written as Cảm ơn, cảm ơn with the Yêu hỏi, the questioning tone. Now we're going to break down a clip of Nghi buying things from a convenience store. Uh, anh ơi cho em hai chai nước suối, uh, một lon coca, một cái thuốc, uh, với lại cho em một cái bật lửa. Uh, hai chai này bao nhiêu tiền anh? Hai chai này 10 ngàn. 10 ngàn, 20 did you get all that? Well, probably not, given that these are two native speakers speaking at a natural pace. So let's break down this clip into individual parts so we can work out what they're saying. Anh ơi, cho em hai chai nước suối, một lon coca, một cái thuốc. Với lại cho em một cái bật lửa. Với means with, lại means again, 
but taken together they can mean and also. Ờ hai chai này bao nhiêu tiền anh? Cái chai này 10 ngàn. 10 ngàn 20, 30 là 5. 5 ngàn. 55. 55. Điện means money, so bao nhiêu điện is just another way of saying how much or how much money. Sem và nói. And this final activity will allow you to practice your speaking ability by asking for things in a convenience store. You will see the picture and the two pronouns above it. The first one referring to the seller whom you're addressing, the second one referring to yourself and the number of those items you want. So in this example, you would say, Chị ơi, cho em bốn lon bia. Are you ready? Let's go. Em ơi, cho chị hai chai nước suối. Anh ơi, cho em một bịch kẹo. Chị ơi, cho em bốn lon bia. Chị ơi, cho em một gói thuốc lá. Em ơi, cho anh ba bịch snack. Anh ơi, cho em một cái bật lửa. So hopefully you now all feel more confident ordering things and buying things at a convenience store. And just to conclude, these first four lessons have now covered all the main phonological features and sounds you need in order to be able to speak Vietnamese with a clear and intelligible pronunciation. Moving forward, next lesson we will look at booking a table at a restaurant, ordering dishes there and paying your bill. Future lessons will now be shorter in length, but we will still refer back to pronunciation features as and where they are pertinent to the lesson. Cảm ơn các bạn đã xem video này. Hẹn gặp lại.